Hey there, it's Jason from Codemanship uh, with a short video um, talking about a, a rookie mistake that I see a lot of developers make. Um, I've got some code here. It's some knocked up code for an exercise in legacy code. Uh, and what it does is it fetches um, JSON data from a, for a three-day weather forecast. So we've got all these hourly forecasts. Um, and it summarizes those for the across those three days with average temperatures, um, highs and lows, and so on. Now, the problem here is that I'm fetching this JSON data. Let's just quickly take a look at the data. Um, so this is the data that I'm fetching from my endpoint there. And if you look at my logic here, I'm binding directly to that JSON data. So I'm binding directly to the schema of that data, which I don't control. And what that means is, um, if whoever's developing that external web service changes the schema, then I've got to rewrite a bunch of my internal logic, and I don't want to do that. Uh, got a similar problem here with a, a Python version of this, but slightly worse, um, which is if you take a look, it's not just binding to that JSON schema, but it's binding using dictionaries. So it's binding using keys, strings, essentially, um, mapping directly onto that schema. So it's, it's arguably twice as bad. Um, what you really want is a layer that translates, that translates from their schema into an, an internal schema that we control. Um, this is sometimes referred to as an anti-corruption layer in domain-driven design mm -hmm. because it prevents our, um, our code here from being corrupted by someone else's schema, someone else's domain model. Um, so always a good idea to not bind directly to data transfer objects or to XML DOM documents, XML schemas, or to uh, JSON data or anything like that in your core logic, but have a layer that translates into a schema that you control, for example, into classes that you control.